आदरणीय विश्वधर्मी ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ करार साहब का आगमन ज्ञानेश्वर हॉल की तरफ हो रहा है मैं सभी से निवेदन करूंगा कि जब वे अंदर प्रस्थान करें तो खड़े रहकर तालियों के साथ हमारे मेहमान ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर वेदाभ्यास कुंदू जी का और विश्वधर्मी डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ जी करार जी का स्वागत करें and they have entered we will request all the audience to please give a standing ovation a standing welcome ovation to revered honorable dr vishwanath d karar sahab sath hi honorable dr veda vyas kundu ji aaj ke charcha satra ke pramukh vakta dr veda vyas kundu मैं साथ ही प्रार्थना करूंगा डॉक्टर मिलिंद पात्रे जी से डॉक्टर धीरज सिंह साहब से और डॉक्टर अनामिका विश्वास मैडम से टू प्लीज टेक द पोजीशन ऑन द डायस डॉक्टर सौरभ चतुर्वेदी जी अगर सभा में उपस्थित हैं my dear friends a very good evening saint shri gnaneshwar and saint shri tukaram endowment lecture series trust pune world peace center alandi mites mit world peace university pune india in sabhi ke sanyukt tatvadhyan mein 27ve endowment lecture series and orientation workshop 2022 mein aap sabhi ka swagat hai aaj panchwa din सायंकाल सत्र 28 नवंबर 2022 नॉलेज नोइंग अ टोमेटो इज अ फ्रूट इज नॉलेज विजडम इज नॉट पुटिंग इट इन अ फ्रूट सैलेड दोस्तों हिंसा और अहिंसा पे हम कई बातें करते हैं लेकिन एक हिंसा ये भी होती है जब एक सभाग्रह के अंदर हम जोर से कहें बात करें और हमारी वक्तव्य की वजह से किसी को दिक्कत हो एक सादी सी गाड़ी अगर किसी कार के सामने हम पार्क कर देते हैं और वो कार वाला अपनी गाड़ी नहीं निकाल पा रहा है इसे भी हिंसा ही कहा जाता है इसकी जानकारी मुझे बिल्कुल नहीं थी एक अवेयरनेस सेशन में दो अक्टूबर के दिन जब मैं वो अटेंड कर रहा था तब मुझे समझ आया कि हिंसा और अहिंसा का सही मायनों में परिभाषा क्या है इसी तरह भाषा ज्ञान होना यह नॉलेज है लेकिन किसी की भावनाओं को आहत ना करते हुए उचित शब्दों का प्रयोग करना यह हमारी विवेक बुद्धि है यह हमारी समझदारी है और इतने बेहतरीन थीम को इस टॉपिक को यहां आज हम लोग लेकर आए हैं आपके साथ आज के इस कार्यक्रम की हम लोग शुरुआत करेंगे सबसे पहले विश्व शांति प्रार्थना के साथ एक ऐसी प्रार्थना जो किसी भी धर्म जाति और पंथ से ऊपर उठकर ऊपर वाले के द वन क्रिएटर एक ब्रह्मांड नायक के लिए हम लोग प्रार्थना करेंगे फॉर ऑल द ब्लेसिंग्स आई विल रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन टू प्लीज राइज एट योर प्लेसेस एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट द टेक्निकल टीम टू प्लीज प्ले द वर्ल्ड पीस प्रेयर जय जय स्वसंवेद्या आत्मूप देवा तूति गणेशु सकलार्थ मति प्रकाश मणे निवृत्तिदासु अवधारि गोदी 
गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव थैंक यू दोस्तों ध्यान की शक्ति किसी सिद्धार्थ को गौतम बुद्ध बनाती है कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत करने से पहले या फिर मैं कहूं कि इस ज्ञान सत्र का आस्वाद लेने से पहले थोड़ा सा ध्यान करते हैं एक संगीत में ध्यान की तरफ हमें लेकर जाएंगी योगा डिपार्टमेंट से आई प्रोफेसर मृणमयी गोडबोले जी थैंक यू सर डियर ऑल ओम हैज अ पावरफुल वाइब्रेशन दैट हेल्प्स अस टू इम्प्रूव द मेंटल फिजिकल एंड स्पिरिचुअल वेलनेस it is also known as the sound of the universe and helps us in meditation relaxation healing calming and stress relieving it reminds me about the story of healing qualities of the nada or music once the omkar nath thakur head of the music department in hindu vishwavidyalaya kashi went to italy when he was practicing he was doing riyaz at 3 am the watchman of the hotel went to sleep and the manager of hotel woke him and asked him why he slept on duty so the watchman confessed it's because of hearing the music after knowing this the manager requested omkar nath ji thakur to sing for mussolini the dictator of italy as he was suffering from sleep disorder and surprisingly mussolini also fell asleep within 10 minutes because of the soothing voice of the omkar nath thakur ji so that is the power of the music similarly one should take the benefit of omkar sadhana for any kind of health issues so everyone here is requested to participate in the omkar meditation gently close your eyes please don't sleep relax sit in a comfortable posture and may i now request our technical team to play omkar
gently rub your palms feel the energy and open your eyes gently thank you so much bahut dhanyawad uh, professor mrinmay godbole ji aage badhte hue pehle main bulana chahunga dr anamika biswas ji ko jo ki director hain school of sustainable studies ki for the introductory remark and welcome speech good evening everyone <clears throat> i would like to first of all as we have started with this beautiful session uh, would like to thank you uh, professor ravi and professor uh, from yoga department for giving such a wonderful experience of omkar uh, i would like to thank uh, all the uh, dignitaries sitting or welcome would like to welcome all the dignitaries sitting on the dais dr and professor vishwanath karat ji jinke chhatra chhaya mein ye itna khoobsurat hamara karyakram ka aayojan kiya ja raha hai i would also like to welcome uh, shri kundu ji jo uh, dr kundu abed bias kundu ji jo gandhi smriti se aaye hain aur pichle 20 saal se non violent communication mein Uh, काम कर रहे हैं ही इज़ अ नोन वेरी वेल नोन ग्लोबली नोन स्कॉलर ऑन नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन ही हैज़ बिन एसोसिएटेड विद गांधी स्मृति एंड दर्शन स्मृति मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर न्यू डेली ही इज़ बिन एसोसिएटेड एज प्रोग्राम ऑफिसर देयर हिज एक्सपर्टीज लाइज इन मल्टीपल डायमेंशन ऑफ गांधी एंड फिलोसफी नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन गांधी एंड मॉडल ऑफ मीडिएशन लिटरेसी फॉर पीस Uh, non-violent conflict resolution and human interconnectedness he has also been you know developing lot of programs and courses in these areas which are focused on non-violent communication uh, he has been coordinating and organizing various uh, initiatives for the same uh, nationally and internationally uh, he has also been uh, associated with the several gov uh, central government uh, programs state government programs and uh, which includes judiciary police and armed forces and universities and colleges it is indeed a pleasure to know that this subject of non violence is been taught to none other but the police and armed forces as well of course our young generation definitely needs it but knowing that 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 we are uh, discussing and we are you know deliberating on this subject through uh, uh, dr ved vyas kundu ji uh, these uh, subjects with the forces as well Uh, he has also published his articles in journals and many chapters in books nationally and internationally and uh, in 2020 nobody can forget uh, and we can no never forget and can never you know thank le uh, any less or more uh, for the covid uh, this uh, covid uh, warriors uh, shri kundu ji has been promote uh, be has been given awarded this uh, Cor uh, corona warrior award by the journalist association of delhi for his contribution in promoting non violent communication during this pandemic era so i would like to uh, welcome sir and i would like to request with my this uh, you know a uh, small uh, brief uh, introduction about sir to please enlighten us about this uh, uh, program sir you sir thank you sir दोस्तों मैं सबसे पहले निवेदन करूंगा विश्वधर्मी ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ डी करार साहब से कि आज के हमारे प्रमुख वक्ता डॉक्टर वेद अभ्यास कुंदू जी का स्वागत सत्कार करें आई ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द डिग्निटीज ऑन द डायस टू प्लीज ज्वाइन ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ करार सर टू फेलिसिटेट डॉक्टर वेद अभ्यास कुंदू globally reputed scholar on non violent communications senior program officer gandhi smriti and darshan samiti ministry of culture new delhi दोस्तों अब मैं आमंत्रित करता हूं आज के हमारे प्रमुख वक्ता 
आज की थीम है नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन फॉर हारमोनियस को एग्जिस्टेंस प्लीज पुट योर हैंड्स टुगेदर फॉर डॉक्टर वेद अभ्यास कुंदू रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ कराद सर इट्स सच ओके थैंक यू रिस्पेक्टेड ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ कराद सर प्रोफेसर धीरज सिंह जी प्रोफेसर मिलिन पात्रे प्रोफेसर सौरभ चतुर्वेदी प्रोफेसर अनामिका बिश्रा विश्वास एंड प्रोफेसर रवि साहू and all the honorable faculty members and the students here it is such a great honor that i have been invited here and i really feel from the profoundly from the bottom of my heart that i could come here and really uh, share my small little work on non violent communication with all of you uh, also i thank my guru uh, professor priyankar upadhyay sir who will be coming tonight i think and he has inspired me to do a lot of work and we do lot of work together and also importantly he uh, re requested me to come here non violent communication as we were meditating now and i remembered those beautiful words of the venerable thiknath han uh, peace within one self peace in the world unless there is peace within one self how can they we work for peace in the world non violent communication respected members like i am from delhi and every year during the winters especially now already the things are getting bad in terms of pollution what happens is that ki we have a lot of problems of breathing you know because of the serious level of pollution also think of a situation when you ha might have had a food that was spoiled you know you might have some food poisoning things like that you know digestion problem so the food that we take in or the air that we breathe in are so very important because it helps com completely and directly links to our well being to our healthy ecosystem similarly communication communication is like a nourishment you see what we intake or what we give really is and directly links to our overall well being a healthy communication ecosystem is so very important for our well being and happiness think of a situation where we might have a fight because conflicts are something which an organic part of our life we are all human beings there will be conflicts in our life but how we resolve them if we are aggressive if you are fighting it out with terse words some you abusive words possibly at the end of the day you will find yourself to be in a situation where you will have lot of stress it really doesn't help you but think how you resolve a particular conflict or a dispute using most use of words a healthy communication ecosystem so this journey today this small little journey that we are going to embark upon to try and understand how important it is uh let us start with our uh, there is a small powerpoint presentation uh, how do we okay 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 so in fact this particular program on non violent communication we have been doing in gandhi smriti for a long time and as a so uh, ma'am rightly pointed out uh, we have been doing with the judicial officers uh, with lawyers with police with teachers with students whole lot because communication is something like you know we cannot not communicate so in that context how we communicate is so very important and especially in today's situation where many of us feel because of lot of pressures pressures all around uh, we find ourselves being very aggressive we overreact and so in that context non violent communication becomes very important let me start this presentation with this beautiful quote of the mahatma the world will live in peace 
only when the individuals composing it make up their minds to do so. Very, very important. Each one of us have the responsibility of contributing towards a culture of peace. So, it's very simple. Our communication helps mold our realities, our perspectives and emotions. It makes us feel connected to each other. And in fact, communication is a reflection of the inner workings of our minds. When we talk of communication, the most primary form of communication is our thought. So if our thoughts are impure, if our thoughts are dysfunctional, then it creates a lot of problem. So right from our thoughts to our verbal communication to our non-verbal communication, everything is equally important. As Lord Buddha had said, the words have the power, both the power to destroy and heal. When words are both true and kind, they can change the world. Because the words that we are using is so very important. You see how you engage with a person, how you communicate with a person is extremely critical. That's why we, when we have these sessions with different institutions, we request institutions to develop a whole structure, a non-violent communication ecosystem in institutions where conflicts, disputes can be resolved in a most non-violent manner and it becomes so very important. So right from the individual level to the institutional level, inculcation of non-violent communication as a practice becomes such a healthy thing. It reduces stress. In fact, we could reflect on this very important point. Words hold power that can be used to instigate or neutralize any given experience. They can be used as weapons, either offense or defense. We need to be aware of the energy that our language, our words hold and use them for the greater good. In fact, key to nonviolent communication is how we reframe from the usual way that we talk. I remember having a session with uh, uh, judicial officers and lawyers of one of the district courts of Delhi. After one month, I, go, I went back to have a feedback session with them. The president of the Bar Association, you see we all know how uh, lawyers and advocates are very aggressive in their courtroom in the argument before the bench. So this uh, person who was the president of the Bar Association of that uh, court, he said, that when we talked about the strategy, that the strategies you talked about of non-violent communication, I started using them consciously in my arguments before the bench. And he said that, because what I want to say to me, I will say it. But in which way I will say it, that can make a greater impact. And he says that, he told me that my experience is that I feel that these strategies that you have discussed or that we have discussed that I can better my argument in a better way. So just it is way on how we reframe from the usual way that we talk. Here I would like to give you an example on how important non-violent communication is on you know, trust building, on mutual respect, and how we connect with others. You see a very simple mundane exp experience, ex uh, example. You see one of my friend, his name is Dharmata Dharmacharya Shantam Seth. Probably every one of us heard, heard of uh, the famous novelist Vikram Seth, his brother. So he's a good friend of mine. So once I was at his home and he had to send a bundle of courier. So generally we will call the driver and give the money and that's the end of it. So he calls his driver, please mark the words that he uses. So he calls his driver and he says, Abhi, aap busy to nahi hai. So he said, no, so he comes. So again, we will give the money and the courier packet and that's it. So, but he said, just mark the word he's used. Agar abhi aap jayenge, aapko kasht to nahi hoga. See, he's the boss and the driver. So the very way we talk, he wants the courier to be delivered, but the way he talks, it evokes great respect from the other person. And my own experience suggests that when we use some of these tools, you actually are able to connect with the other person in a greater way. This is my own personal experience I can suggest. So let us see why do we need a strong foundation for a non-violent communication ecosystem. In this, what we do is there are different schools of thought 
Of course, non-violent communication has been very much part of the Indian tradition. Look, I've written quite a lot on uh, how it uh, you know, emerges from the Ved and the Upanishads, the Purans, uh, then the Buddhist tradition, the whole idea of the right eightfold path, the right speech, then the Jain, when the Jain uh, philosophy. So it has been part of the Indian tradition. Of course, there are a lot of people in the Western countries, their own tradition they have put. Here, we have been trying to look forward with the Gandhian principles, the whole idea of nonviolent communication. And it's very simple. The five pillars of Gandhian nonviolence are the simple foundational stone of nonviolent communication, we believe. The first is respect. If I respect you, you respect me, then even if we have differences, we can easily handle that differences in a much greater way. So, and greater respect leads to greater understanding. We all have different point of views. You see, we are all humans. We are all different in some way or the other. But when we respect each other, then even if we have differences, we have a greater understanding of each other's point of view. And when we have greater understanding of each other's point of view, it leads to greater acceptance of each other's positions. Because, again, when think of a situation when we have a tiff of, uh, uh, you know, dispute with a friend. Many times what happens is that ki we have that quote-unquote ego issues. We feel we are correct and the other person is wrong, isn't it? Most of the time that happens, we are all human beings. So, but when we respect each other and thereby try to understand each other, it helps in accepting each other's position. And when we are able to accept each other's position, then it helps in easy and amicable and constructive resolution of disputes. Of course, appreciation, positive appreciation. Friends, like we are living in a situation where we are fed with so much of negative news and negativity is all around. Like you get up in the morning, especially during the COVID times, you open the WhatsApp and so many negative news we see every day every fourth. But have we lost the art and science of positive appreciation? There are so many positive things that are happening around us. But more, many of us, we try to get overwhelmed by the negativities. And because of that, we try to forget the positives. But if we start understanding the art and science of positive appreciation, much of the negativities that are happening around, you know, we will be able to overcome that. So positive appreciation. Say for instance, I'm very angry. And what happens is that if I start overreacting, then it becomes a problem. But if I open the window and see the beautiful flowers around, slowly and slowly the anger comes down and how we react to the other person becomes so very important. And of course, the last one is compassion. You know, understanding the suffering of others, so very important. So these five pillars of Gandhian non-violence are definitely important. And these are very basic principles of life, of human values, of human uh, nature. And if we can, you know, uh, inculcate them, if we can assimilate them, a lot of things can happen. Now let us try to explore on what exactly is non-violent communication. Uh, let me tell you, there might be, again, as I said, so many different ideas and uh, schools of thought of nonviolent communication. <clears throat> but one of the best explanation, I feel, comes from, uh, he is no more, he is a very senior Gandhian, uh, Natwa Thakkaji. He was from Gujarat and he, in the height of Naga insurgency in 1950s, he went all the way to Nagaland and started the Nagaland Gandhi Ashram. And in fact, uh, I had the honor of having a dialogue with him on this whole idea of nonviolent communication, where he gives his explanation of nonviolent communication using the Gandhian principles. So he says, in fact, he was so concerned, he passed away in 2018. So when I was doing this dialogue with him, he was very concerned on so much of aggressiveness in the society per se, at every level, whether in schools, we find, you know, schools, students hurling abuses at their teachers. There were so many instances of school students beating up their teachers, so on and so forth. So he was so concerned, he felt that we need to be non-violent communication literate. 
that means we need to develop critical understanding of non-violent communication and try to inculcate and assimilate and nurture in our daily lives. So he said non-violent communication literacy would mean how our communication efforts should be non-violent, how our ability and capacity to communicate not only with ourselves, but with our family and society be non-violent in all aspects and overall how the entire process of communication, whether between individuals, groups, communities, and the world at large should be non-violent in nature. This would entail deep understanding of the art and science of non-violence and its centrality in all our actions. It's not just verbal and non-verbal communication. Non-violent communication literacy would also include whether our thoughts and ideas are non-violent or not. So it is a holistic approach. When we are talking of the Gandhian approach to non-violent communication, it is a holistic approach. It's not just a human-to-human -human communication but also our symbolic communication with the nature and our symbolic communication with all other living beings. And that becomes very, very important in the context of today's situation of climate change and other issues. Just some months back, the uh, ecological threat report came and the 2020 Human Development Report, which talked about the human epoch, the Anthropocene, and how human activities are destroying the different fragile ecosystems. So our Symbolic communication with the nature also has to be non-violent. We can't be violent with nature. We can't be violent with the environment that we stay in. Also, we can't be violent with other living beings. That's so very important. If you remember the famous British primatologist, uh, Professor Jane Goodall, she, at the time of the COVID-19 when it started, she said how human activities are destroying the habitat of the uh, wild life and how the wildlife population are coming closer to the human habitat and so that is resulting in greater transmission of these viruses. So our symbolic communication with the other living beings are also equally important and also which Natva Thakka sir was talking about the communication with ourselves. In fact possibly many of us might have realized during the course of the, when we are very angry, when we are very stressful, our self-talk and our inner dialogue becomes dysfunctional. We, we, we talk, probably hurl abuses with ourselves, and say also our imagined interactions or imagined dialogue with people with whom we are having a tiff, it becomes very dysfunctional. And it becomes, you no, know, and we actually communicate with the others, it gets reflected. So it has to have the whole dimension of communication with everyone in the ecosystem. Here, uh, through these processes of the Gandhian approach and what the different Gandhian scholars were talking and our different workshops, we have tried to develop these elements of nonviolent communication. Also here at this stage, I would like to say, uh, we have done numerous workshops all around, uh, having talks, like having different literature and all, uh, in fact, before this, I would like to give you two interesting examples on how this model of Gandhian approach to nonviolent communication has been taking up. Uh, a, a year and a half back, I had the opportunity to, to take some sessions on conflict transformation for uh, one of the leading universities of Indonesia. And one of these uh, students was from Nigeria, Andrew. So Andrew is staying in northern Nigeria. And in Nigeria, they have what they call vigilantes, like we have this whole idea of home guards here. So the vigilantes are supposed to help the, uh, you know, uh, police. So they've, over the years, if you read the literature, they've become very violent. You know, like they, if they pick up a pickpocket, if they ho uh, catch a pickpocket, they will beat him blue and black before handing over to the police. So our friend Andrew has conducted more uh, workshops for more than 270 vigilantes and in some of the police stations they have this vigilante boards and these police stations have become uh, no they are now making it compulsory that only those who have taken part in these training programs on non-violent communication which is essentially this Gandhian model they can be part of the vigilantes boards. Also interestingly enough uh, almost two months back we have this course material which is also uh, no if you go to the official UN website it is there also. 
uh, it, there is a link to our uh, organizational website, our course material. Some uh, almost a month and a half back, this person from Yemen, uh, I can tell you Yemen is one of the most conflict zone in the world, most violent places. So these people actually translated this whole course material into Arabic and sent to me. I was quite amazed because I can't read Arabic. So then I shared with some people and they said that's amazing because this whole and there are almost 20, 25 students who are taking up this whole thing. So that's very important how we assimilate. That is important. And here I would like to say that if today, uh, you know, I decide that I will become a non-violent communicator, it's never going to be. What we have to do is basically we need to uh, nurture, there should be utmost sincerity on our part to become, no, uh, to practice non-violent communication, whether at our own self, with our own self, at our, uh, with our family members, institutions and the society at large. That's the important thing. It has to come from practice. It has to come from deep, sincere assimilation. So the first element is complete lack of violence in the way we communicate with others, be it verbal, non-verbal, our thoughts and ideas. The second important element is the intrapersonal level, the intrapersonal communication. As I said, the very first uh, peace within oneself, peace in the world. If my intrapersonal communication is dysfunctional, if it is an unhealthy communication ecosystem within myself, then I can't do much. Like as we started with the meditation, how we calm ourselves, how we become focused, that's so very important. So in that context, like recently, we did a very interesting study with a uh, friend of mine. Uh, of course, we have written that paper on non-violent com intrapersonal communication. How, in, even if there is a serious problem of uh, you know, trauma in your, our lives, how still we can maintain a you know, constructive intrapersonal communication. That is a challenge for every one of us. Because if we start you know, withering away, then our whole life will fall apart. So that is the challenge each one of us has. Then, very important, human values and the principles of humanism in our communication efforts. Very important. In today's world, we find a lot of young people uh, you know, very bereft of possibly values systems. So how even in our communication process, we can instill that principles of humanism and human values. That is something very important aspect of nonviolent communication. Use of appropriate and positive language. Like I, I gave you the example of our friend Shantam. You know, use, how you can use positive language to uh, connect with the other people. Use of positive, because in today's world of the social media, what happens is that, is like especially say for instance in Facebook, someone have passed away and without even thinking, we will click like. How can I like the demise of a person? That is beyond my understanding. Also in this era of social media, what has happened is that, uh, you see, <laughs> there is what I call, we can say it is like a frozen communication. There is no heart to heart communication. There is no soul to soul communication. It has become very mechanical. No, that feeling, the emotions is not there. And uh, because of that social media, like it is all dependent on likes and unlike and uh, those emojis and that's it. So that heart to heart interaction is missing. So how do we instill, especially amongst young people, use of positive language and appropriate language is something very, very critical. Expansion of our emotional vocabulary, extremely important. Because sometimes what happens is that ki we don't know how to express ourselves. And if we don't know how to express ourselves, what happens is that ki we overreact. We don't know how, what to say, how to say. And because that really causes a lot of problems, especially in relationships. So how we can expand our emotional vocabulary is something very important. So in fact, during, this, uh, during the workshops, especially if we do workshops instead of these kind of lectures, we ask the participants to do some of these exercises. Uh, 
Here I share with you this very powerful quote of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Language is very powerful. Language does not just describe quality. Language creates the reality it describes. We should take, try to take responsibility of our action, words and feelings and not blame others for these. Avoidance of stereotypes is another important element of nonviolent communication. The whole notion of in-groups and out-groups. Also, for instance, very simple example. Say, for instance, we are going in the street and there is a pickpocket. And, you know, our stereotypes, there are few street urchins around. So, pahla reaction hoga, isi ne pocket mara hoga. That is the stereotypes, no? So, in our communication, also these kind of stereotypes, you know, seep in. And that leads to a dysfunctional communication ecosystem. So how we can avoid some of these deep-rooted stereotypes? Say persons with disabilities, how we talk to them. You know, use of those kind of words and languages which hurts the other should be avoided. And these kind of stereotypes is something which is wrong actually. Power of empathy, extremely critical here. As we know that in this world with so much of you know, our pursuit for our goals and materialistic uh, you know, the whole notion of cross materialism and all, probably can we th say that, you know, there is, seems to be empathy deficit in the world. We probably have lost the art and science of being empathetic because human nature is essentially empathic in nature. Human nature is something peaceful in nature. I remember that famous, uh, uh, you know, if you all remember 1988, UNESCO convened uh, meeting of some of the top scientists and philosophers across the world and to discuss whether human nature was violent or human nature was peaceful. And if you remember the Seville Declaration said human nature is essentially, you know, not violent. It is because of the environment that we're living in, the pressures that we are following, that is the reason why we are. So how have we lost the art and science of being empathetic? That is the critical question. And how we can develop that skills of empathy, that latent uh, skills of empathy that we have, how we can ensure that it gets highlighted. Importance of compassion again, so very important, understanding the sufferings of others. And expression of gratitude. The more we thank the other person, you know, that is so very important, you know, for growth of human beings. If you read that beautiful book uh, of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama and his conversation with uh, Desmond, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the joy of happiness, which talks about the more you express gratitude, the greater your growth is as a human being. So, and kindness, kindness in com uh, communication. You see all these altruistic tendencies, Empathy, compassion, kindness, gratitude. So also we know that these are linked to the neurosciences of the brain. The more we practice this, uh, it leads to greater reduction of stress and contributes to our well-being. And that's so very important. So can we instill some of these uh, principles and can we practice it? as part of our communication process. Because we are going to benefit when we are doing practicing that. We are going to evolve as human beings. We are going to able to connect and deepen our relationships with whomsoever we are having. Another important aspect of nonviolent communication is flexibility and openness in our communication. If we go back to the freedom struggle, even at the height of the freedom movement, Mahatma Gandhi was keeping his op channels of communication uh, with the Britishers even then. What happens is in situations of conflicts, we tend to harden our position. We feel that we are correct, the other is wrong. Probably it leads to a situation, we are not flexible. It leads to a situation where there is a complete breakdown of communication. And that leads to the destruction of relationships. So how, through practice, we can, you know, be more open, be more flexible in our communication processes. Another important critical aspect of uh, nonviolent communication was is connecting with needs of others. How 
a person is reacting because of certain reasons. I will give you an example, very interesting one, which was shared by, uh, I was having this session for judicial officers, uh, and uh, uh, it was, and the session was chaired by a very senior honorable judge of the Delhi High Court. And she gave a very interesting example of this. She said that when she was a junior judge, uh, there was a case of a brother and a sister in the court, and that was a litigation. So one, uh, uh, she realized that why don't we see if there can be some mediation possible. After all, bhai or bahan ka ye serious litigation jo ho raha hai. Then she called that lady to the, her chamber and she, she said that she started talking to that lady. You see, most of the time, conflict starts from a very micro level. And if it is not managed at the micro level, it may go big. So this honorable judge said that she realized that this lady who was older than uh, uh, the brother, this lady felt that she was not adequately respected by her brother and her sister-in-law. And that was a small little issue which had grown into a big one and they were there in the court. So how we can connect with the needs of others is very, very important because at the surface level, Probably you might be, you know, I, I, my friend might be very angry with me, but I don't know why that. But if I start looking at the, you know, beneath the surface, at a deeper level, there might be some very important reason because of which she or he is behaving in that particular manner with me. And if I'm able to unearth that, much of the problem that is there will be, uh, you know, uh, can be um, uh, constructively handled. Of course, then active and deep listening skill and how listening skills enables us human beings to grow as individuals, grow as a society. Because in today's world, we find that, you know, probably again, we are losing that art of listening to the other person. Because if I listen to you and you listen to me, that means we are respecting each other. That's the mundane level, how we can promote respect for each other, mutual tolerance for each other, by listening to each other, understanding each other. Very important aspect of element of non-violent communication, avoidance of moralistic judgments. Again, most of the times, many times rather, we fall into this trap. Kuch hua and we jump into conclusion, isi ne kiya hoga, aap to bekar hai. Like sometimes, you know, as teachers, that again happens, you know, Kisi student ne uh, marks kam aya to teacher ne turant bina soche bole are tum to kuch tumhare bas ki baat nahi hai kuch nahi kar sakte you are zero and that demotivates moralistic judgment in fact uh, one famous uh, this uh, western scholar on non violent communication dr marshall rosenberg says that uh, you know judgmental communication is actually life alienating no it demotivates just think of a situation someone passing a judgment on you and um, you get so badly demotivated. Whereas on the other hand, if we are able to, you know, like say the teacher says, for instance, in the school, uh, in the classroom, if you are, the student is not able to do a maths, uh, say, some uh, solution, then the teacher says, okay, fine, I know you are not able to do, but let us try to understand and learn this together. It pumps up the student. So instead of being judgmental, we are motivating the other person. So that brings us to very, very important aspect of nonviolent communication. Friends, these were some of these important elements of nonviolent communication. All of them are equally important. They are interconnected and interwoven. And it's such an important challenge for each one of us to imbibe them, at least some aspects of it, in our daily lives. And also in many of the institutions that uh, one talks and uh, you know discusses we say that it's so very important how we can integrate these principles of course more encouraging at the uh, individual level but also at the institutional level so that we grow you know we all grow together so in fact many a times what we find ourselves are in is that, you know, we have to handle difficult conversations. In fact, there is one particular word I've given to, especially in the institutional context. Uh, possibly, uh, you know, in institutions mein hote hain, kuch log jo rumor falate hain, 
कुछ को अच्छा लगता है कि कोई कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को और बढ़ा दे कोई कॉन्फ्लिक्ट हो रहा है ऑफिस में इंस्टीट्यूशन में यूनिवर्सिटीज कॉलेज हर जगह ऐसे लोग होते हैं हमारे फैमिलीज में होते हैं उनको बहुत अच्छा लगता है कि कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को और जिसको कहते हैं उसमें फ्यूल टू द फायर सो इनफैक्ट एक वर्कशॉप हो रहा था मिनिस्ट्रीज का ऑफिसर्स का तो मैंने कहा कि उनको कि इन इसका टर्मिनोलॉजी कोई था नहीं तो मैंने कहा कि कैन वी गिव द टर्म कॉन्फ्लिक्ट कैटलिस्ट जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को और ज़्यादा बढ़ावा दे सकते हैं सो दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट कैटलिस्ट आई थिंक कैन कंट्रीब्यूट टू ग्रेटर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड इट्स सो डिफिकल्ट टू हैव सच कन्वर्सेशन विद दीज काइंड ऑफ पीपल लाइक समटाइम्स हम लोगों को बहुत डिफिकल्टी होती है वी डोंट नो रियली हाउ टू हैंडल सच पीपल वी वी गेट सिंपली यू नो कि हो कैसे हम हैंडल करें सो हेयर इज अ बिग चैलेंज ऑन हाउ वी कैन यूज द various tools and strategies that we discussed of non violent communication to handle such difficult people and difficult conversations because har samay har institution har family ghar pe aise situations hote hain aisa kabhi koi institution ya family ho hi nahi sakta hai jahan pe is tarah ka situation nahi hoga kyunki aakhir jaise ki humne kaha ki we are all human beings we have all different nature we have all different perspectives even hamara as a individual level हमारा पर्सपेक्टिव कीप ऑन चेंजिंग अभी जो मेरा पर्सपेक्टिव है हो सकता है छः महीने के बाद बिल्कुल अलग हो सो इन दैट कंटेक्सट हाउ वी कैन हैंडल यूज ऑफ नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन फ्रॉम एज पार्ट टू डू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट डी एस्केलेशन दैट इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ वी कैन प्रोमोट इट एज अ टूल ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट डी एस्केलेशन वेदर इन आवर फैमिलीज एट आवर इंडिविजुअल लेवल्स एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनल लेवल्स वी ऑल नीड टू इंट्रोस्पेक्ट वी ऑल नीड टू लुक एट सम ऑफ दीज एलिमेंट्स एंड ट्राई टू सी ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंटली कॉन्फ्लिक्ट स्ट्रेटेजी ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट रिजोल्यूशन क्योंकि कई बार जब झगड़े में हमको लगता है अगर मैंने एग्रेसिवली फाइट करके जीत लिया तो आई फील दैट आई एम द विक्टर but actually as mahatma gandhi had said and all great philosophers har ek dharm jo hame sikhati hai ki kabhi aggressiveness ya violence se kuch cheez hasil karoge to that is very short lived what is important is through love through peaceful methods through non violent methods how we can ensure that this resolution of the strategy because the goal as mahatma gandhi said that in any form of resolution of conflict is a transformation of relationships ye nahi ki koi dispute hua to hum log bas baat karna khatam ho gaye relationship khatam ho gaye the challenge is how we can transform our relationships that is something critical and that is the importance of human nature of course it's a very powerful tool for anger management in fact jab hum students ke sath ye workshop karte hain we request them to do two things we ask them to keep a notebook one page uh, for as a gratitude journal and one page as an anger journal and i can tell you some years back i was doing this exercise with students of the delhi public school guwahati or class 11th ke students the and you can say first we it was a proper action research उसमें क्या किया हमने कि हमने बोला कि पूरा दिन में आप व्हाट आर द रीजंस यू गेट एंग्री विद अ पर्टिकुलर पर्सन हाउ यू गेट एंग्री व्हाट आर द रीजंस यू गेट एंग्री एंड हाउ यू हैंडल सच एंगर्स दैट इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू राइट इन द एंगर जर्नल एंड देन आफ्टर अ मंथ आई वेंट बैक टू दोज स्टूडेंट्स एंड दो स्टूडेंट सेट दैट द वे दे हैंडल एंगर वॉज मच मोर कंस्ट्रक्टिव दैन एवर बिफोर Similarly I was doing this exercise with the students of the National Law University Ranchi and we talked about the gratitude journal and many of these students after a month started messaging me on how they are able to you know be more uh, you know handle diff difficult situations how they were able to improve upon their relationships with the peers with their teachers and so on and so forth by maintaining the gratitude journal so essentially these are all scientific in nature and how we can use them as part of our everyday life processes something very important <clears throat> so thank you very much but lastly i would like to share with you a very interesting thing when we are talking of non violence and ahimsa 
and uh, the importance of Gandhian principle. As we know, as uh, one tries to uh, work with different groups across the world uh, and, of course, within the country, uh, I will share with you a very interesting example of how important and how uh, you know Gandhian values are looked at. I had the privilege uh, a year back, one of my book was published, Peace and Nonviolence. And this was a book of dialogues with eminent practitioners of peace from across the world. But one most unique person whom I had the privilege of having a dialogue was this gentleman from Liberia, Christian Volo Bethelson. Unlike say many people who might be working in the field of peace and all, he was a person for 25 years of his life, he was a rebel armed commander before the Liberian Civil War ended in 2005. He was someone who was in the business of killing people for 25 years of his life, you can imagine. So the Liberian Civil War ended in 2005 and as someone who was an armed mercenary, he was out of business. So he thought ki he will switch over to Ivory Coast to uh, you know, join the rebel army over there. Because his job was killing people. And in fact, because of these armed conflicts, a rebel, another rebel commander had actually mowed down several members of his family. You see, destiny. <clears throat> what happened was that ki he was arms and ammunitions ke saath wo Ivory Coast mein, uh, he was trying to sneak in. So his car got struck in the sand dunes over there. और उसके बगल में एक और गाड़ी सिमिलरली सैंड ड्यून्स में स्ट्रक हो गया था और वो जो गाड़ी था दैट वाज अ व्हीकल ऑफ अ ग्रास रूट पीस बिल्डिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ लाइबेरिया व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एवरीडे गांधीज एंड एवरीडे गांधीज द मेंबर्स ऑफ दैट दे यू नो टॉक्ड विद देम दे एंगेज्ड क्रिश्चियन वोलो बेथेलसन and now you see he has of course left this whole business of killing people. He gives lectures on non-violence and peace. And very important statement he said. He says, Mahatma Gandhi might be the father of your nation, but for me, Mahatma Gandhi is peace in the world. Thank you very much. I would request everyone for a standing ovation for Dr. Veda Bias Kunduji for his wonderful remarks on how nonviolence and peace can improve your personal life and your professional life. Peace within oneself will bring peace in the world. From conflict management to stress management, to anger management, to emotional intelligence, Individuals at peace will bring organizations at peace. What a wonderful way to put it across, sir. These have been wonderful management theories uh, in organization behavior and human resource management. And we were in so much need of this from such a scholar. So thank you very much for giving us those wonderful elements of uh, nonviolence uh, in communication and how can we be better at doing this. Dosto, yagya se janmi ek kanya बहुत खूबसूरत श्री कृष्ण की मानी हुई बहन जब उनके मुंह से एक कटु वचन निकलता है अंधे का बेटा अंधा महाभारत होता है तो दोस्तों कैसे हमारे एक कटु वचन से क्या हो सकता है और नॉन वायलेंस प्रैक्टिस करने पे क्या हमें फायदा होता है कुंदू जी बहुत शुक्रिया आपने हमें इतने बेहतरीन ढंग से समझाया मैं आमंत्रित करूंगा अध्यक्षीय भाषण के लिए रिवियर Honorable Dr. Vishwanath D. Karar sahab ko ke humara mark darshan kare is behtareen vishay par. Friends, I have a tremendous sense of satisfaction on listening to the words of wisdom spoken by Honorable Dr. Veda, Veda, Veda Bhyas. Wow, very beautiful. The Vedas are the way in which he spoke and gave a glimpse of what Mahatma Gandhi really stands for. The way in which he spoke and gave a glimpse of what Mahatma Gandhi really stands for. I am very happy with that. 
ये संत ज्ञानेश्वर सभागृह में वी हैव हर्ड मैनी ग्रेट स्कॉलर थिंकर्स फिलोसोफर्स मैन ऑफ साइंस मैन ऑफ रिलीजन एंड गिविंग अ वेरी यूनिक मैसेज रियली स्पीकिंग मानवता की दिशा लेकिन अभी जो बात हुई अहिंसा परमो धर्म असा एक विषय है जीवो जीवस्य जीवनम एक कैसे संभव है भाई एक तरफ बोलते हैं कि जीवो जीवस्य जीवनम और दूसरी तरफ बोलते हैं कि अहिंसा परमो धर्म पच्चीस तीस साल के पहले मैंने ये हमारे पूज्य साकरे महाराज को पूछा था ये क्या फिलोसॉफी है जीवन की किस पे ज़्यादा मैं जानता नहीं लेकिन अभ्यास करने का प्रयास करते हैं ये नौ में लेक्चर सीरीज का मकसद ही उसी दिशा में है फॉर मिस्टर कुंडू साहब दिस इज कॉल एज अ ज्ञानेश्वरा सभागृह ऑडिटोरियम जो भी बोलो बड़ी लंबी कहानी है इस हॉल की एक पवित्र भाषा भी है जिसका चिंतन आपने कहा कि नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन फॉर हारमोनियस को एग्जिस्टेंस प्रमोटिंग द कल्चर ऑफ पीस प्रमोटिंग द ह्यूमन अप्रोच and develop the cordial relations not only between two individuals but in the family itself and in the society and then we have been saying that vasudeva kutumbakam is the ultimate goal what this mother india stands for ved upanishad ki bhasha jise kabhi kabhi galti se kisi jati ki bhasha bola jata hai ye badi sabse galti hui लेकिन दुनिया मैंने आज सुबह या कल कहा था कि द होल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड टुडे रिकग्नाइज मदर इंडिया अवर भारत माता इन टू नेम्स वन इज महात्मा गांधी एंड अनादर इज गौतम बुद्धा पंचशील की बात हुई सुबह अवर स्पीकर स्पोक ऑन दिस पंचशील इट सेल्फ एन एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ नॉलेज डिवाइन ज्ञानेश्वर के बारे में कहा जाता है जीसस क्राइस्ट को एन एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ लव एंड कंपैशन बड़ा सुंदर चिंतन है कितने साल हुए पता नहीं लेकिन ये चिंतन ये वचन गांधी जी का आखिरी वक्त <coughs> गांधी जी को गोली मारने के बाद भी एक ही शब्द निकल आया हे राम बस तीन बार हे राम हे राम हे राम गुस्सा या अपशब्द निकालने की भावना भी नहीं पैदा हुई ये कैसे संभव है भाई कि आज के मेहमान जो है उन्होंने जिस तरह से बोलने का और बताने का प्रयास किया दैट्स अ ग्रेट इंडिकेशन ऑफ हिज ओन प्योरिटी ऑफ माइंड प्योरिटी ऑफ थॉट एंड प्योरिटी इन एक्शन वी हैव बिन ऑलवेज कॉलिंग दिस एज अ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ विनिंग पर्सनैलिटी ये कैसे होता है ये शायद ऐसा बोलना ठीक नहीं मन की दिशा और दशा क्या है आत्मा का स्वरूप क्या है वेयर फ्रॉम हीस कम इसके माता पिताजी कौन थे कैसे थे शायद उनका आशीर्वाद है और गांधी जी की समाधि के बगल में जो गांधी भवन है गांधी आश्रम गांधी दर्शन गांधी दर्शन वहाँ पच्चीस तीस साल के काम करने के बाद ये बन जाता है मुझे इतना ही आज ऐसे लगता है कि अभी हमारे भाई लोग है बोलने वाले एंड वी विल हैव अबाउट थ्री टू फोर क्वेश्चंस नाउ 
Any one of you who would like to ask some question to our guest today, it's open for you. But tell the name and just a brief question. No more discussion, no more speech. Please. There is a saying in Yoga Sutras that if you hold ahimsa, if you hold ahimsa to the fullest extent, it's impossible for anyone to have a violent thought around you. Ahimsa spreads from heart to the whole environment. Any comment? Well, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Definitely what uh, Ahimsa actually, it, it starts from our inner self. Unless and until the Ahimsa that we practice comes from the inner self. Just talking about Ahimsa or thinking and doing something is not enough. It has to come from deep within ourselves to evoke a real non-violent action. In fact, some years back, um, some of the group of students together, some young students, rather school students, they started working on this whole idea called non-violent footprints, something akin to the carbon footprints. Now, how much non-violent we are during the course of the day? Like, there will be so many activities and so many people with whom we interact during the course of the day. Can it be an exercise in self-introspection while we are retiring to bed, how much non-violent we were during the course of the day. So they developed this whole interesting uh, concept and indicators of non-violent footprints. If anyone are interested, I can share with them uh, through email or any other mode. So I think that has to come from deep within ourselves. Yes, anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, this question is out of uh, curiosity and not at all a sarcasm. Uh, as you uh, told in Nigeria, for vigilantes, they undergo a certification in order to uh, be vigilante. Uh, do our MPs and MLAs also undergo this kind of certification? <laughs> or if not, if not, is there any possibility that this could be integrated in our uh, system? I think, sir, could take the leadership in having some sessions and we would love to do under his <laughs> guidance. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else, please? Because very difficult to uh, approach them. <laughs> Sir, Namaste Ji. Myself, Dr. Asim Patan, uh, working with Prof. Karal Sahib. Whether the food habit uh, can play some role in uh, non violence, violence communication? Uh, sorry? Food, food habit. Food habits. Uh, whatever the person eats. Your behavior. Okay. As to be very Can frank, I really, uh, I'm not uh, competent enough to answer that. Like, uh, I don't know, like, whether it has or not any scientific, uh, so I think I would be a wrong person. Possibly you are saying that if, say, someone is a vegetarian, someone go, but you see, to be, I have to confess I'm a Bengali, and Bengalis are fish-loving people, so I take my <laughs> fish. So, so I don't know whether food habit has any. <laughs> rather, rather Pathan himself knows the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jaisa khave an, vaisa hove man. Sidi baat hai. That has been proved beyond doubt, possibly. जब आइंस्टाइन बोलता है कि मेरा पेट कोई इट्स नॉट अ ग्रेवयार्ड ऑफ एनिमल्स ही वाज अ वेजिटेरियन न्यूटन द सेम वे वो बोले भाई मेरा पेट कोई ये मुर्दे गाड़ने की जगह नहीं है वो अनेक बातें हैं उसके बारे में लेकिन सर्टली देयर हैज बीन 
a certain scientific proof. Jaisa apan behave karte, us par asar hota hai uska. Kyunki mein, dekho, mein meri baat batata hoon. Ki jeevan mein kisi machar ko bhi aisa dhaka lagani ki chhati nahi hoti. Lekin ladai hoti hai to mein to talwaar se kisi ko kaat bhi sakta. Mau mein na hoon ya mi vishnudha sa, kati na vajra sa bhedu hai sa. ये वचन है संतुकारा महाराज का ये नेचर है सारी दुनिया में जो भी लोग मानवता के लिए कार्य किए गांधी जी की बात छोड़ो उनके बारे में बोलना उनका जीवन उनकी जीवन भर की बर्ताव की बातें बोलने की बातें नम्र झाला भूता त्याने कोंडिले अनंता विनम्रता ये सबसे बड़ा सुंदर लक्षण है और टीचर के लिए तो ये बहुत जरूरी है ये कहता हूँ मैं आपको घर में अपने फैमिली में कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन में भी जब समझ तो लो पहले भारतीय लोगों को क्वेश्चन पूछे बगैर उसको समझने के पहले उत्तर दिया जाता है ये पहली बार मैं जब इंग्लैंड गया मुझे याद आता है कि फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई ट्रैवल टू यू ब्रिटेन सुबह पाँच बजे अनाउंसमेंट शुरू हुआ कि विद इन हाफ एन आवर विल बी लैंडिंग एट द एयरपोर्ट ऑफ हीथ्रो लंडन मैं जाग उठा तो मेरे मन में आया कि भाई अभी मैं पहली बार जिस देश ने मेरे देश पर डेढ़ सौ साल राज किया है कैसी भूमि होगी वो कैसे लोग होंगे इतने दूर से आकर सारी आधे दुनिया पे भी राज किया और मेरे भारत पे भी राज किया तो आई वाज वेरी क्यूरियस एंड लिटिल बिट इमोशनल अबाउट दैट इवेंट ऑफ लैंडिंग दैट सॉइल ऑफ ग्रेट ब्रिटेन एंड बाय द टाइम द प्लेन लैंडेड आई गॉट डाउन एंड आई स्टार्टेड ट्रैवलिंग बाय अ ट्रेन टू द होटल इट वॉज फार ऑफ मैंने देखा कि सामने की सीट पर कोई लड़के और लड़कियां बैठी थी दे वर हैविंग अ वेरी डिबॉचरस बिहेवियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ ऑल पीपल पहली बार मैं देख रहा हूँ तो मुझे लगा कि जिस देश ने इतना किया तो ये कैसे हो सकता है देन आई वेंट टू एम्पेरिकल कॉलेज एम्पेरियल कॉलेज लंडन एंड आई मेट द हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट I asked him a question, but one thing was so great that when I went to him, mechanical engineering head of the department, I just wanted a cup of tea or water. So he got up first, went to the side room, and brought a water for myself. There no pion, one side. But I asked him a question. My friend, can you tell me? I saw some most debaucherous and vulgar behavior while traveling from London Airport to your place. And I be dekh raha hoon ki how your country ruled the half the world. He said, Professor Karad, it was not the British people who ruled the world. It was the Oxford and Cambridge which ruled the world. जो सीख होती है ऑक्सफोर्ड और कैम्ब्रिज में जो सिखाया जाता है दैट वॉज द विनिंग पार्ट ऑफ इट थिंकिंग देखो कैसी है सोच कैसी है तो मेरे ख्याल से ये स्पीकिंग या वायलेंट स्पीकिंग और नॉन वायलेंट स्पीकिंग गोज टू द रूट्स ऑफ हाउ यूर बिहेवियर इज डेवलप बहुत लंबी बात हो सकती है लेकिन मैं धन्यवाद देता हूँ आपको कि आपने मुझे बोलने का मौका दिया नहीं, लेटर ऑन सो दैन we can communicate non violently are there any habits like that of course uh, you see we discussed about the five 
pillars of Gandhian non-violence. I think these are the very basic things that we can do. And they are most simple. Many people, many places I go with the students, they feel that Gandhian principles are very difficult to follow in today's world. But is it difficult to be respectful for each other? Is it difficult to have a greater understanding of each other's point of view and perspective? So these are the f some very basic things if we can start with. Not at all complicated, but very simple. We can make a lot of difference. And as I said, that it needs real utmost sincerity on our part on uh, like if I think I will do, but there is no sincerity, I don't think we may be able to actually practice nonviolent communication. So it comes from deep within, I suppose. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Veda Bias Kunduji, for uh, your answers for that inter interactive session. Now we will move on towards the vote of thanks, and for that I will uh, invite Professor Dr. Dheerat Singh, the Dean of Media and Journalism. Uh, our beloved founder, respected, revered uh, Professor Dr. Vishwanath Karad, uh, Honorable Dr. Veda Bias Kundu, uh, Dr. Milind Patreji, Professor Chaturvedi, uh, Dr. Anamika Biswas and uh, Dr. Ravi Sahu. It's my great uh, honor and pleasure to uh, present this vote of thanks to this wonderful uh, discussion that we had on nonviolent communication. And it's in fact appropriate that me, as the director of the School of Media and Communication, is presenting the vote of thanks at this occasion. I just like to bring to the notice of our respected guest, Professor Kundu that the School of Media and Communication has been doing uh, a lot in these times, especially when the media itself has, been, has taken the role of uh, conflict catalyst, especially the electronic media, which is enabling uh, violence and, non, uh, and violent communication in today's times. Our School of Media and Communication has been taking great steps and strides under the guidance of our beloved founder, we recently announced Journalism for Peace Awards, which gave three honorable citations and awards to journalists who are working in the field of increasing communication, increasing understanding, and working in fields of conflict re resolution that otherwise mainstream media has not been concentrating on. And we honored and um, gave these awards to really, really small uh, journalists working in really small towns, bringing about doing the job of uh, media and communication that was uh, earlier mandated for journalists to do. With these words, I'd like to bring this, uh, the fifth session of the endowment lecture series to a close. Thank you all for your wonderful uh, participation in this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh Dr. Dheerat Singh Sahab. Uh, before we conclude, I will request the technical team to play the universal anthem of Pasaidan. I request everyone to please rise.